Hello and you're welcome to another special edition of the AAU TV News. And today we are bringing you a comprehensive breakdown of streetism in Ghana. My name is Lydia Nyame. Joining me are... Jemai Madaladem Duchi. And my name is Ajiman Otrodako. We're glad that you're with us and please bring in your comments via our social media platforms on Facebook and YouTube. We'd love to hear from you. And don't go anywhere. We'll go for a quick pause. Don't go right back. Welcome to GTP Health and Safety Corner. Charging up goes a long way. Strengthen your immune system. Your immune system needs all the help it can get. Eat well, stay hydrated. Hands pick up a lot. Avoid touching your face. Your well-being is in your hands. Sanitize regularly. Stay safe. GTP Timeless. Welcome back from the break and now various issues influence the growth of streetism but the most prevalent causes of streetism are domestic violence, low income of families, family related problems, physical and sexual abuse and various sexually transmitted diseases such as HIV AIDS according to the United States. Streetism or street children is one of the biggest challenges affecting the country in Ghana and right here at the National Theatre around me are so many people who are lying around young people and have got nothing doing. They've got different issues, different reasons why they are here. But we're here to have interaction with them. What exactly brings the, brought them here to the capital and what they intend to do with themselves if they leave the streets? Are they going to remain here or they have plans for themselves in the future? Let's find out as we go and have interaction with them. My name is Ibrahim. My friends call me Escobar. My name is Evans Asante. My name is Joseph Kokro. Escobar, My mother is an Ikuapem and my dad is Nigerian. I'm also from Juaboso in the Western North region. I'm also from Koforidua, even though I have lived in many parts of the country. I have to work. If you give me a job, I will gladly do it. My parents have neglected me and don't take care of me. At the moment, I am taking care of myself. Yes, I went to school, but I decided to stop. I just couldn't cope with schooling, so I had to stop, especially I couldn't cope with the attitude of my teacher, so I stopped. Not really, but gradually I'm hopeful that I can make a headway in what I'm doing right here. People actually tag us to be criminals or drug addicts, but we are not on the, we are nothing like that. We actually are working here harder. However, people think that we are stealing or we are into drugs, but I tell you, we have never engaged in any of that activity before. I have plans of leaving the street if I get a job. I'm hoping that if you offer me a job, I will leave the streets. My parents are worried. They are actually worried that I'm here on the streets, but I have no choice. School didn't help me out. I couldn't succeed in my education, and therefore I have to do something for myself. That is why I'm here on the streets doing what I'm doing, even though my parents don't like it. At the moment, I wouldn't want to go back to further any kind of formal education. I am rather looking for a vocational institution that I can go and do something hands-on training or acquire a skill so that I could get a job. All I want is get a job. What I do here is just to go to vehicles when they are in the traffic and, and clean their windshields for some passwords. My name is Joseph Kokro. Uh, um, you asked where I'm coming from. I currently come from Kuforidia to Accra, but I have been living in many parts of the country. I really roam a lot. I have a, I have lost my parents. Uh, I lost my parents many years ago, and that is why I'm now on the streets. Relatives who I really counted on to help me actually didn't care about me. They actually have no idea of my whereabouts because they are also thinking about their own welfare. 
And in Ghana, in this country, you have to mind your own business and put your destiny to your own hands because nobody wants to hear your problems since they also have issues of their own. And that is why I took the mantle on my own to come to Accra in a place I have no idea of who, of anyone to help me, nobody, no relative. But I believe that by God's grace, I will make it in Accra on the street. I have been surviving on the street for many years since I came to Accra and I'm actually relying on my God-given talent which with what I use to make a living for myself and sometimes I have been writing applications to many companies in Accra just for them to help me but I've realized that every company and everyone in there thinks about themselves and it's all about the whom you know if you don't know anybody in Accra most definitely you won't be able to get the help you need. People don't know you and don't trust you and therefore they can't help you. And that is the plight of a street man or a street boy like who I am. That nobody knows me, knows my background. Nobody trusts me if I'm a good person or a bad person. But I believe I'm, so, I'm someone of good repute. Just that tragedy has struck me in this way. And that is why I can't make a good living for myself. But I'm hoping that somebody out there would also find favor in me and give me a job that can take me off the streets. One very sad thing is that in Ghana, we are gradually being divided. We used to be a very unified country, but now politics is dividing the country with regards to who you know and what is what your political affiliation is. If you don't join this party or that party, you don't get the help you need. Even though, sadly, the people in the party who struggle for the party to come to power don't even get the help they need or the support they needed. How much more a street child like me or a street man like me who would put in all my support for a party and wouldn't be given any position to hold because I'm from the streets and I don't have any educational background. So it is sad in this country that you can't even tell anyone your problems. However, I'm hoping that somebody out there would hear my voice and my plight and support me and believe in me that I also have something good to offer to this country. I began to sell shoe polish in Accra for starters, but I happened to lose my profits due to some personal expenses. Each day I have to buy food, I have to buy water, so I couldn't keep so much money on me. And the sad thing is that I got robbed of my money on the streets. So I am still hustling to make a living here. My parents got divorced after I reached class 6 in junior high school, so my mother single-handedly uh, took care of me all the way to Form 2. But everything ended for me when my mother's cocoa farm caught fire and lost our only fortune. That is what ignited me to come to the capital city to make a living for myself. At the moment, I also clean the windshields of cars when there's traffic as a way to make an honest living. Sometimes I sleep at Cantamanto, the large market, um, or sometimes I will sleep on the streets. I understand that it's not safe for me out here, but I always commit myself into God's hands to be under the protection of the Almighty. Since I have no choice and I have no one in Accra to lodge with, I just have to keep myself on the street and hope that each day will be a better day. When the pandemic broke seriously in Ghana, we were we are afraid to lose our lives. But it was, I would say that it was good when we received donations from people around in terms of hand sanitizers and nose masks. Sometimes we are tagged as criminals. As, I mean, we, people think we look like one. People blame us for criminal activities on the streets. But, you know, it depends on the kind of people that you deal with. And I hope that as in Accra, I would find help with someone who can teach me how to play this instrument. Well, that was a report from AA TV reporter Ajimano Chidako and presenter. But Ajiman, since you are here, I mean, I want to know, how is it like being on the streets and having the opportunity to talk to some victims of streetism? How, how was it feeling like? Lydia, I must say, um, Jemima, it's not really a pleasing mm -hmm. um, thing to find people lying on the streets, you know, 
the conditions out there are very harsh. Mm -hmm. But you find people who actually make a living for themselves while on the street. Okay. And they are endangered so many things, so many threats. Mm -hmm. and, and you ask yourself, though, what happened to these people? Where did they come from? Or mm -hmm. What went wrong in their life that they find themselves in such a position? So I, wouldn't, I, I said I did my job all right, but I actually felt so bad for them. Uh, I, I, it was an emotional day for me, for getting to though. But I think that uh, in any way, through the discussion, we'll find out the, the way out. But it's not a good thing being on the streets, okay. basically. Okay, you know, I, I must say that, I mean, there are two categories of uh, people who live on the street. Yeah. There are the ones who live on the street, they live, they work on the street as the only means of uh, survival for them. And then there are other ones who also take refuge on the streets during the day. And then at night, they go back to some sort of families. But I, I would want to know, how different is streetism from child labor? You know, um, being a street person, basically, is um, you live in your life mm -hmm. or having your livelihood all on the streets okay. and nowhere else and child labor basically is being a child but being subjected to some mm -hmm. harsh conditions mm -hmm. that naturally are not meant for you mm -hmm. but due to some reasons you're supposed to make a living therefore you have to be in it mm -hmm. but i would say that child labor is in one way or the other a subset of citizen because mm -hmm. some families no one category you mentioned over there are people who are from homes yeah but their parents, due to some abject poverty of a sort, these children have no choice but to go on the streets and, and make a living to sell um, a, a newspapers, Waters. water, uh, polish, or even PK. wipe, uh, PK, all these things. And even some other um, harsh ones like yeah. prostitution and other, just to make a living for the home. Mm -hmm. So f for that category, I would say this is child labor because okay. the kind of people you find over there, some are very young people that they shouldn't be on the street doing those things, but there they find us over there having no choice. Uh, uh, Jemima? Um, uh, I would say, I feel like um, child labor is, uh, um, let me say, exploiting the child mm -hmm. um, both emotionally and then physically. And then when we talk about streetism, we talk about the homeless children those who actually stay um, on the streets to actually involve this, themselves in activities or work just to earn a living. Okay. You know, you know, Ajimana, I, I would want to know, I mean, obviously poverty uh, influences streetism in a lot of ways, but how bad is the situation? It is, it, it is very bad. I mean, the poverty gap in Africa, specifically in Ghana, mm -hmm. is very bad. That bad to the extent that families do very well very, very severe Westerns on head of things just to make a living for themselves. Mm -hmm. it, it was surprising that some parts of Ghana, some families actually give their little children out mm -hmm. to people to go and work with in very, very uh, critical, dangerous activities that they could lose their children. Some even to sell, selling their children out oh, yeah. just to, be get, to get paid. You I said, to what kind of poverty is this that really drives people, parents in Ghana, to do this? Mm -hmm. It was surprising that one person I found on the streets out there said that both parents are, are alive mm -hmm. and they are aware that their son is on the street wiping windshields yeah. and they have nothing to say about it. I mean, even though they are worried, they can't do anything they about can't do anything it. About so it. how poor are you to the extent that you can't take any initiative to get your son a better future, mm -hmm. but rather let him or give him or her the freedom to go out, go out there and do any menial job just to make a living for themselves? Mm -hmm. how, how bad is it? It means it's very bad. I mean, the, the issue of poverty in Africa is, is really bad because it seems like every problem that Africa faces is due to poverty. Yeah. Okay, adding to what Adjaman said, um, taking it from where he said um, you, the parents are home and the child is actually working on the street. But I would, you know, sometimes it's not the child's fault because there is nothing at home. And maybe that is the only thing he is also doing to feed himself. Okay. The parents are home, not knowing what the parents are also doing to feed themselves as well as the remaining children in the house. So I feel it's not from the show and the parents because they also don't have. So they also can't even help you open a job, get you a job, get you a business. They also can't help. So the only way that young man can help him himself is to also get to the street and do a little job. Even if it's a CD you get, at least it will buy you water. You know, notwithstanding my submission right there, I think that we are missing the point in regards to who is responsible 
for who? Mm -hmm. No, children are not responsible for, for parental upkeep mm -hmm. at that point. I mean, they are not. You've given birth to a son, and therefore, or a, 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 a lady, you are supposed to take care of that child to the level they need to be, give them the right education, the right kind of food they have to eat. Mm -hmm. That is your responsibility. That's why you gave birth to them. So when you say that I'm neglecting my child because I have no means to take care of them, it's like saying that I, I, I didn't know that I couldn't take care of my child before I got married or got but gave birth. I don't true. think, I think that we have to understand parentism as, as a term, that parental care is very important. It's, it's a law that yeah. you, if you don't take care of your child, I mean, you should be, uh, be, be held accountable for it. But here lies the case. My child is grown. I'm not saying the child so, should automatically take care of the parent, even though at a certain point you have to take care of the parent. But I don't have some. I am old. I am home. And my child is grown. He has the energy, the zeal to go out there and work. But then he's not getting the kind of work he wants. Specifically, not an office work, but something to fetch him something. Mm -hmm. And he's not getting it. And right now, that is the only thing he can do to actually... You know, you no. Know, no. I, 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 the, the unfortunate thing... I, I actually want to help you. Yeah, no, you see, no, <laughs> we, relax. The unfortunate thing is here is that you don't go on the street to go, go get a job. Mm -hmm. There's no good job on the street. On the street. Mm -hmm. well, you can't make any good living on the street. Okay. That's the first thing. But so, sell to get something. Oh, please. How much? Many jobs like this. You, can, you know how much they okay, earn. So I, less than a city. Less than a city. I think we are all missing a point here. When we are talking about streetism, we, we are not referring to people who are too grown. We are talking about people who are 18 yeah. years and, yeah. and below. You know, people, the term, the, the definition is clear. Mm -hmm. People who are homeless. So yeah. if you're in Accra mm -hmm. or anywhere in the world mm -hmm. and you have no place to lay your head, mm -hmm. actually a home wise, okay. and you actually rely on the streets for your, mm -hmm. for your habitat, mm -hmm. then we say you're a street person. You, uh, so you're, you're in the category. That's the okay. issue. Now, second of all, if you were parents mm -hmm. and you give your child a room to go make a living for him or herself out there, mm -hmm. without giving that child the adequate education they want or that complete education, mm -hmm. then you haven't done your part because the children have the right to education. Mm -hmm. it's, 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 it's a fundamental law. Yeah. So if you're a parent and you can't secure your child's um, uprise throughout the academic ladder to a point that is appreciable, mm -hmm. then I think you haven't done it as a parent then you are actually contributing to citizen. Oh, yes, and you must be held accountable by the law. This is what I'm saying, that every parent out there, so all these kids we met out there, should actually lead us to our, their parents. Mm -hmm. We should know these parents. Who, which parents neglected their children? We have mm -hmm. neglect, and we have some unfortunate uh, occurrence, like the one whose um, case read that there was a, a fire outbreak in the village that okay. caught his mother's farm mm -hmm. yeah. and the farm got bent and since really that was the only fortune yeah. he stopped school yeah. to make a living for himself that's an unfortunate one mm -hmm. so he came to accra just to make a living for himself mm -hmm. apart from that any other parent who's alive and finds the children on the street making a living for themselves mm -hmm. these parents should be questioned that's true oh yeah that's true. I mean, it, it will also interest you to know that this whole streetism issue is not an issue in Ghana alone. Yeah. I have a statistics here from Nigeria, which is from the International Labour Organization, and it says about 14 million children under the age of 14 are working across Nigeria, and about 10.5 million of them are not in school. You know, um, this huge figure, you try and do um, a deeper analysis and find out how many of them have parents. Who are living how many of them have lost their parents if you lost your parents that is a different issue, issue. it means that you have nowhere to go even though i know there are some of the relatives who yeah. perhaps that's a long issue but if your parents are alive and they allow you to get to the streets mm -hmm. to make a living for yourself ultimately i think there's something wrong somewhere even though I, i'm not saying that we don't have other poverty in in, in africa mm -hmm. people are poor but I think that the responsibility of every parent to ensure that their children are well kept is, is paramount. Mm -hmm. I mean, leaving your child out there opens him up to so many hazards. Um, you, you know, yeah. Ajima, the, uh, the interview you had, I think it was the first interview with a young boy. Yeah. He did mention that he was going to school, mm -hmm. but then had to stop because he didn't like what his mother was doing. Here is a clear indication of a parent who is making all the efforts they can make to put so the put child in school, but he school. thinks yeah. because of attitude <laughs> of a madam, he <laughs> has to stop. <laughs> so know, these are all issues that we face. You know, true. Uh, do you remember? I don't know. But 
truancy is a big issue, okay? You know, exactly. When I used to be in uh, junior high school, I had colleagues who were very truant. Mm -hmm. Now I asked them, why would you want to skip school to go and do other things on the streets? And I mean, they, they used to have fun going out there, mm -hmm. skipping classes mm -hmm. to do sports betting, skipping classes to go and do um, follow women. Or ladies. I mean, this is how many things we're doing. Oh no, I was a good boy. I, I was a very good boy <laughs> when I was in class. I actually was advising them. The most important thing is that when you are truants, mm -hmm. we have to really find ways and means to get you to understand mm -hmm. the reason why you're in school. Yeah, yeah. Because when you lose her from school, you are losing our knowledge. Mm -hmm. And what can you use to make a living for yourself mm -hmm. without an you can acquire in school? Okay. So basically, truancy is a, is a big issue. Also, contribute to tourism actually, because if you're truant, yeah. you, you then say. School is not good for me. Yeah. Then what else would be good for you on the streets? I, I, I mean, I, I, I differ from that. Mm, it, 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 it's quite unfortunate. Now, how, how does being a homeless child, I mean, how, sorry, how does being homeless affect a child? Let me put it that way. Um, it poses a lot of effects, mm -hmm. um, but let me go straight into social vices. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You know, um, a lot of, um, let, me, let me go straight forward to ladies. When you're a lady, mm -hmm. you sleep on the street, yeah. you get a whole lot of, let me say, attacks. Mm -hmm. You end up engaged in prostitution. Mm -hmm. Sure. Nowadays, when you go to places like Osu, Circle, La Paz, mm -hmm. you see a lot of young ladies in the evening, you know, doing their own thing just to entice a man mm -hmm. to go sleep with them for money. They have got parents, though. They have exactly. got parents, right? But they do all these things because the parents, the money is not coming from the parents and they have to feed for themselves. Mm -hmm. So they engage in drug addicts, they um, take a lot of drugs mm -hmm. just to feel okay, just yeah, to forget true. their problems, you know, and all that. So it, um, it poses a lot of effect, both to the male and the female. Okay. You know, Lydia, a homeless child is a really endangered child. Oh, yeah. Because, you know, they're saying that charity begins at home. Yeah. Every good thing that you could ever emulate or learn Begins at home, mm -hmm. kindness, um, gentleness. Okay. I mean, all the good things. But when you are exposed to the streets, mm -hmm. guess who will teach you all these things? Yeah, yeah. You, you 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 are actually open to so many attitudes. Mm -hmm. In an interview with one of the gentlemen, he said that when he joined the streets, he knew the bad gangs, mm -hmm. the good gangs, mm -hmm. you know, who have tattoos because now they are started, they, they are homeless on the streets, yeah. and the street is all about violence to survive. So. Child who's homeless like a child who's opening the, the jungle. Yeah. So many lions and tigers. You either ha you either eat or be eaten. Mm -hmm. So you have to turn bad to survive. Mm -hmm. So you are open to so many things that wouldn't be good for you. Mm -hmm. At the end of the day, you become a bane to society, a vice to society. And these are things that if we don't curb, we may have so many so many issues affecting our development and productivity in the country. That's great. I, I would also want to add road accident. Yeah. Because these, these, these young people always find themselves by the roadside. That is basically where they do everything. Yeah. They, are, they, are, they are exposed to a road accidents. They are exposed mm -hmm. to rape, sexual harassment. Yeah. But, but you know, it, 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 will, it will interest you once again to know that most of these street children are male. Research has proven yeah. that over 80% of street children in Ghana yeah. are males. Yeah. Ajima, wh wh why do you think our males are the ones who end up on the streets more than the females? Hmm. I don't know, but I think that, you know, males are males. You know, we have our own features, yeah. uh, both emotionally, we are quite assertive. Mm -hmm. So if a male, perhaps I'm, I'm the only son of my mother, mm -hmm. and we've been struck by this catastrophe, and we have nothing to do, I have to prove that I'm a man. Yeah. I said, mommy, stay home. Let me go get money yeah. or let me go do something for myself. So men wouldn't want to be at home uh, being pampered mm -hmm. like women would do. Some women would do, basically, mm -hmm. would be at home. I'm not saying women are, are, are soft or perhaps can be assertive. Mm -hmm. But I'm saying that naturally men will say, allow me, let me go out there and do something because I'm a man. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. So men always want to be men. So we're, we're, we're men on the streets. Well, we are all enjoying the discussion, but we would have to go for a quick commercial break. And after the break, we'll continue with the discussion. Welcome to GTP Health and Safety Corner. Charging up goes a long way. Strengthen your immune system. Your immune system needs all the help it can get. Eat well, stay hydrated. Hands pick up a lot. Avoid touching your face.
Your well-being is in your hands. Sanitize regularly. Stay safe. GTB Timeless. You're welcome back from the break. And if you just joined, we are discussing streetism in Ghana. Streetism in Ghana. Ajaman, let, let's, let's go back to our discussion. Now, how do we prevent streetism? You know, um, preventing is better than cure, basically. Mm -hmm. So, find ways and means to curb this right from the beginning. Okay. I think that there are a number of issues that has to be like, um, talked about when it comes to curbing streetism. First of all, the source of it. Mm -hmm. Now, every child who ends up on the streets is from a home. It's either you lost your parents mm -hmm. or your parents got divorced, a broken home. Mm -hmm. So I would say, first of all, for the parents who've broken away, mm -hmm. it's the only way to get your children off the streets is to re reunite. Mm -hmm. yeah. Because if you still have uh, a single mother or a single father, still there will be somebody mm -hmm. who will be on the street because that unified care is not there. Mm -hmm. Mommy is not available. Dad is available. We're still going to be on our own. Mm -hmm. So I think that the primarily... We have to reunite homes, basically, yeah. before we can get the children back that's, home. That's exactly. Second of all, I think that um, there are so many civil society organizations out there, CSOs out there, uh, who are meant to take care of children. I mean, they, they are always advocating for street children to be educated, mm -hmm. send them back to school, give them a trade, make them irrelevant to the economy. Because I see that every street person is left out there to rot in, I mean, just to decay off. I mean, just, we just don't see you as part of society. We see you as a bane. We see you as a social vice. But uh, is there a way we could bring these people back into society by providing a system for them? CSOs should start doing their advocacies. We've done several advocations and it's about time we advocate for street children. Mm -hmm. People should step in and find ways I mean to re I mean, just recall these people from the streets. Mm -hmm. What do they want? I mean, according to the video, he said, one said that, as for me, I'm available to work. It's, I came here because of work. Mm -hmm. And I'm doing exactly what I came here from working. Just that what I'm doing is menial. But if I get something meaningful, I will be on the streets. And that is all, that's the dream that they have. Mm -hmm. Our dream is to be on the street if we get a better job. Mm -hmm. So I think that if, we give, if they're given the opportunity to do something better for themselves and end well, mm -hmm. Nobody will want to live on the street again after living That's a true. good life or doing a good job that gets him good income. That's true. Um, I'll continue by saying there should be effective policy. Effective policy should be put in place because currently mm -hmm. we have free SHS. Mm -hmm. Okay, So the government can help by extending the free SHS to our primary um, classes so that those parents that are not able to um, take their children to school can actually benefits from this free schooling so that at least everyone on the street will be in school whether mm -hmm. they will pay half of the fees whether the fees will be taken care of and then all you need to do is to give your child um, a packet money to take to school mm -hmm. i think that can also help to curb or reduce the rate at which streetism is happening and also there should be public education i think parents should also be educated that if you leave your child Let's say if the parent is actually alive, you should be educated that when you, t you when you leave your children to go cater for him or herself on the street, these are some of the dangers he or she will encounter, and this is what it will lead to, and yeah. that, and that, and that. So if there uh, there is this public education, I think it should also reduce yeah. um, streetism in Ghana. Yeah, you know, Jamal, in your submission, you didn't mention that parents should make a conscious effort to educate their children. But what happens if your child doesn't want to? It's, you, you see, it's, it's how you make the child see it, mm -hmm. see the educational level. Because when we are kids, all of us, when we want to go to school, you see your mom has to be, you know, talking to you. That's pampering. Mm -hmm. okay. So it's, it, it is how you, the parents, you make your child see education. Okay. How you talk to him or her from the tender age. How education is what it will help you to be. At that time, you are not really equipped or let me say your minds are not open to actually absorb that mm -hmm. but you know that pampering that thing oh go to school i'll give you this go and come out okay. give you this i'll do this you know that thing that thing alone as a child would um help you or it will ginger you to actually step into that you know for, for me i think uh 
you can convince a child or youth to go to school yeah. if they don't want to they would go but, but nothing good would come out of it so i also yeah. think it's about time parents pay attention to uh, the needs of the their needs children. Of children your child may not want to go to school but may have a technical yeah. Yeah. something that they yeah. would want to there yeah. are tibet exactly. courses in school yeah. they could go and learn how to sew they could go and learn how to do a lot of exactly. things exactly. So it isn't always about going to school to learn those science courses Science. those human no 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 i mean like sometimes yeah. parents should also pay attention to their children Exactly. Yeah. You know what they also they want. Exactly. Yes. Ajima, Ajima, exactly. What, what, what do you want to add? I mean, most definitely. No, no, no child will say, as for me, I want to be on the streets. As, mm -hmm. as I said, it's a dream or a desire. No. The street becomes an option when all hope is lost for these children. That's the point. So in, in the way to bring them back to themselves and help them realize their dreams and their aspirations, we have to listen to these children. Parents, listen to your children. Focus on their needs. Don't just neglect them and say it's our way or nothing else. But when you listen to your child and know what they need, perhaps you follow their academic progression and their performance. You see, my child is not doing well for my education. You, you have to interact with him. That what, why are you not doing so well? They can tell you the reasons why. The guy told me what exactly was his problem. That he wasn't treated well on school, in school and that formal education wasn't his thing. Uh, what else do you want to say? I want to just work. It means you need skills to work, yeah. right? Mm -hmm. So then we think of a new way, TVET. Yeah. And then this conversation starts from there. Exactly. So parents, take your time. Spend time with your children and interact with them. Mm -hmm. I mean, you, you have your children speaking to people out there rather than better, more better than the way they do with you yeah. because of how you treat them at home. So exactly. it's about time we educate many parents that parent is, uh, parental care is just it's not it's beyond giving birth to a child mm -hmm. but giving that child the attention they need the attention. Is, is paramount because attention. your child can either survive or end up in a very worse well state if they're not giving the attention they want that's so i think that's more important th that's true i mean I, uh, in, in our conversation uh we did mention a lot of reasons why these children would leave their various homes but one thing that we forgot to mention is the fact that some of these children actually run away from homes mm. because their parents are not listening yeah so i really agree with ajaman uh, when he says parents should make conscious effort yeah, again to, sense, to listen yeah. to their children now in, in wrapping up uh i want us to quickly talk about the way forward how do we move forward as a country in terms of streetism being a very big issue? I think John mentioned a point about the government policy. You know, government is the, the bigger institution that does things that we can do collectively, uh, individually. Mm -hmm. I could try and uh, start a campaign on agenda and get everyone off the streets, but I can't do it better than government. But government starts in, in, in us all shoes and our resources go to him. So government should find a way to get everybody out. And I think it was a perfect one you said that there's free education. Mm -hmm. Can we have a free skill training for exactly. people on the streets? And I think government is making some amends. I think um, there are some plans of bringing some free skill training for everyone out there. Mm -hmm. And, you know, just bringing the policy out there is not enough. Because this, the street show, uh, people don't really know that much about these policies. Mm -hmm. They don't really yeah. spend so much time. Yeah, yeah. They are thinking of how to wipe uh, screenshots and make money. You are thinking about policies. So they need to be approached. Mm -hmm. There should be a deliberate effort to approach these street young people and let them know that, listen, we want to get you off the streets. Mm -hmm. That is actually open for you. Mm -hmm. It is better you enroll to it. Yeah. It's free. Then we also give you the accommodation you need. You can't just go to a free training uh, skill program and go back to the streets. Mm -hmm. yeah. But there must be some provision of um, some accommodation for you yes. so that you can now start a job and still live in a comfortable place. Mm -hmm. Getting everyone on the street is possible. It's possible. It is possible mm -hmm. if we sit down to create a better comprehensive policy that covers these people, makes them the point of focus. Mm -hmm. Believe me, we can get every child off the street. That, that's true. I, I think government should prioritize these uh, street children or let's yeah. say street people because yeah. personally I don't know if I'm, maybe I'm, I'm not really listening but I haven't heard of any government that has got policies for these street children and yeah. I asked my school, sorry myself are they not citizens? They are. Don't they have voting rights? They have, they vote all on, the time. On, on December 7th they all join these long yes, queues. they have vote. cards. Exactly yeah. so government should, should, should prioritize these street children are, are, are same as it prioritizes everyone else in the country. And that is why I think there should be a radical action. Now, if you're on the streets and you think that government's policy isn't um, open enough to capture you, mm -hmm. 
don't vote for them. Exactly. Exactly, because you, you also need to be mm -hmm. off the streets. Yes. So if you think that their policies are not so covering enough for you and your future, then you have the right to say, I won't vote for you, I vote for Party B or Party C, because I think their policies are much more clearer, and I think I find myself in there. Mm -hmm. That's great. Did you remember your last words? Um, I would also say, let me say, in Accra 2007, a research was conducted, okay. and we found out that um, 61,000 492 children are struggling to make ends meet on oh, the street. And then every year it increases. So I think that gender and gender children and social protection should actually yeah. come out of the research. Um, that will be that will help to actually care the streets because some this number of students on the streets, you don't know what or why they are there, what's pushed them there. So I think if research should come um, if these people should come out with research that will help them curb the streetism, it will actually help. Okay, well, that, that today has been a very, very interesting and educative conversation on streetism in Ghana, and I hope you enjoy the show. So thank you very much for spending time with us on today's special edition episode of the AETV News as we addressed uh, Sudism in Ghana. And I believe you followed the reasons why young people end up on the streets from broken homes and some other issues that we can't care about today, but we believe that governments, policies, and also CSOs organizations in Africa can really support to get these people off the streets. Thank you for watching once again. And my name is Lydia Nyami. With me are... And my name is Ajimo Achudako. Thank you very much for spending time with us and see you next time and next week on the AETV Special Edition News. Have a nice day and bye.